Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, spoiler season is, uh, okay, I, I highly doubt it's back. I don't think it's back. I think this is just like uh, MTG Philly, uh, you know, spoilers. I assume that they kind of gave way, way, way early for March of the Machines, or Machine, or, or whatever it is. It's too early to know the name of the set, regardless. A couple of spoilers from the upcoming set, which I believe comes out uh, end of April, I believe. Early April, I think, would be spoiler season or late March. Regardless, Omneth, though, no. Omneth Locus of All is here. And, uh, yeah, again, we, we all saw the progression of Omneth, you know, going from green to gruel to teamer to four color to, um, yeah, now we have the five color version finally. And, uh, yeah, black got added and now it is Phyrexianized Omneth. Sad face. Um, yeah, <laughs> so we have four four Phyrexian Elemental Omneth Locus of All. That costs Wooberg, but the uh, the black and the Wooberg cost actually is Phyrexian black, so you can still just cast this for four total mana into life if you need to. If you would lose unspent mana, that mana becomes black instead. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, look at the top card of your library. You may reveal that card if it has three or more colored mana symbols in its mana cost. If you do, add three mana in any combination of its colors and put it in your hand. If you don't reveal it, put it into your hand. So... A lot going on here. First, kind of like a Crufix, uh, basically, uh, effect, essentially, but even better. If you lose unspent mana, it becomes black instead. Crufix is, you know, turns into colorless mana. So essentially, this is a mana, you know, bank, essentially, mana storage for you. You don't lose your mana, so, you know, you can just dump your mana into your mana pool and just leave it there if you don't have it to spend it on anything else. Or if you've got something like a Victory Chimes, which can give you multiple mana, you know, I mean, four mana, basically, with each trip around the table. Yeah, you can just build up a ton of mana and utilize it however you need to. Now, obviously, it becomes black instead. You have a five-color deck. You can focus heavily on black if you want to. Or, I mean, we do have some ways where we can maybe change that mana into other colors. Also, that second part. Yeah, for a, a canary that basically just costs four mana, this is pretty absurd, this entire thing. But yeah, that second part is, hey, uh, do you want extra free mana? Because, yeah, if you've got a card that's got three colored mana symbols in its mana cost, and that is pretty specific in how it's worded. It doesn't say that it has to be a three color card. But yeah, there are three color cards, obviously, that do meet that requirement, all of them essentially, but yeah. Three colored mana symbols, and then you get three mana in any combination of its colors. So basically, free mana just for looking at the top card of your library, revealing it basically. Regardless, you get to put it in your hand either way if you're revealing it or not. So you just basically get free extra mana, and card draw with this too so this is mana storage this is additional free card draw this is additional free mana i mean the potential free mana i should say because that's not always guaranteed though of course there are ways to set the top of your library yeah this commander does a ton of things and again it is a five color commander i see this one being incredibly popular and heavily played yeah this is going to be pretty good now, on this episode, on these quick take episodes, again, a quick reminder that I'm going to be going through the budget buys and also the pricier picks. So, cards that are within my budget, less than $1. Cards that are above my budget, sometimes much more than $1. Regardless, all these cards will be in a link in the description below in case you want to check that out. So, yeah. Uh, and also, I should mention uh, that uh, sometimes when new exciting commanders like this one definitely is going to be a popular commander are spoiled. Sometimes cards that work well with it might go up in price sooner rather than later. So if you're looking to pick some of those cards up, make sure you do that sooner rather than later. First up, let's start off with the budget buys. Again, those are cards that are less than $1. First up again, like I mentioned, three color cards. Yeah, do meet that requirement because again, you need three colored mana symbols. Naya Charm, yeah, the, the charms all basically made that requirement right. Uh, the the three color charms, I should say. Naya Charm is a very flexible card. Three damage to a creature, return a card from your graveyard to your hand, or tap all creature target player controls, so it can be helpful in a lot of situations. And again, if you're revealing this off the top of your library, you can just add its own colors to your mana pool, and then just cast it for free, essentially, because it gave you the colors that you needed. Villainous Wealth, a giant X spell like this one, can be incredible, again, especially one that has three mana symbols in it. Target opponent exiles the top X cards or library, you can cast any number of spells with mana value, X less from them about paying their mana cost. My favorite X spell, one of my favorite cards of all time, 
being able to just get a ton of value off the top of opponent's library. And again, Omnath allowing you to store up mana can just let you just make this into a massive game ending spell. Blue Sun Zenith, again, it doesn't have to be a three, you know, different color card. It doesn't have to be a three color card. Blue Sun Zenith is X blue, blue, blue. Again, that meets the requirement. Three mana symbols that are colored mana symbols, non, you know, non-generic essentially. So yeah, blue, blue, blue added to your mana pool. Target player draws X cards. Shuffle Blue Sun Zenith into its owner's library. Again, a great way to draw a lot of cards. This could even be a finisher for you if you're able to get enough mana into it to, you know, mill an opponent essentially. But yeah, a fantastic way to dig down into your deck. Moving on, how about some top of the library shenanigans like Elsha of the Infinite, a card that obviously does have three mana symbols as well, so you can just go you know, get mana from this as well when it's on the top. When it's in play though, you can look at the top card of your library anytime, so now you know what potential you might be getting off the top of your library with Omnath, so you can kind of plan ahead with this and know, you know, what extra mana you might be getting. On top of that, you can cast on creature spells at the top of your library, so you can get some extra card advantage again. Basically, the top of your library is kind of like a second hand, and yeah, with those, you can cast them at flash speed too, so that's pretty crazy. Jace's Sanctum, instant source spells you cast cost one less to cast, so reducing the generic mana can really help you in cards cost, you know, because again, you are getting free mana from Omnath, so reducing generic mana can definitely make them even cheaper and easier to cast. On top of that, whenever you cast Sins or Sorcery, you scry one. So again, look at the top card of your library, you can put on the bottom of your library. And yeah, being able to basically set the top of your library like, oh no, I, I don't like that one because you know, it, it, you know, it's not gonna give me free mana essentially. Let's put that on the bottom. And then Victory Chimes, it untaps during each other player's untapped step and you can tap in a player of your choice, which is always going to be you with this commander, adds colorless. Again, like I mentioned uh, earlier, essentially this works fantastically with Omnath. Hey, uh, tap this every single turn. Even if you don't use the mana, it just is going to turn into black mana for you to use again because Omnath is a fantastic mana bank. Speaking of which, yeah, Frontier Siege. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you're going to be choosing cons at the beginning of each of your main phases. That is, again, pre- and post-combat main phases. Add green green to your mana pool. So basically, a free four mana every single turn so i mean every single one of your turns you know what i mean but basically again because you're not losing this mana because of your commander you can just build up a giant mass mana storage that you can then utilize again for those massive spells general ferris rock rick ain't another card to consider hex refrano colored whenever you cast a multicolored spell create a four four red and white golem artifact creature token again like I mentioned earlier, like Blue Sun Zenith, you don't need to have multicolored spells, three colored spells essentially, to meet that requirement for Omnath to get that free mana. But many of your spells, and you might lean very heavily into multicolored tribal. And if you do, yeah, General Ferris Rock Ray can make you a massive army in no time. Speaking of gaining vantage from multicolored spells, Tome of the Guild Pact. Whenever you cast a multicolored spell, draw a card. And this can tap for one mana. So it's a very inefficient mana rock. Five mana tap for one, but it can draw you a ton of cards throughout the game if, again, you build your deck around multicolor. But now let's move on to price your picks again, cards that are above $1. And yeah, Doubling Cube is the first one that came to my mind. Pay three, tap double the amount of each type of mana in your mana pool. So again, let's say that you've got, you know, three lands available so you can activate this. You've got 10 mana in your mana pool because, again, your commander is a mana bank. They can just store it. Let's use that three mana, you know, from those lands. And then tap this and then double my mana to 20. Next time, 40, and so on and so forth. This can get absolutely absurd. Speaking of absurd, mana reflection. Yeah, any kind of mana doubling for permanence, or especially for your lands, can be incredible with this commander. If you tap a permanent for mana, it produces twice as much of that mana instead. Being able to, again, hyper utilize mana, hyper just, you know, fill your mana pool with mana, and just have an absurd amount of mana just staying with you throughout the game. Wilderness Reclamation. If you have your end step, untap all lands you control. Yeah, basically, hey, do you just want to double up on the effectiveness of your lands again? Obviously, this really works well with, you know, mana doublers as well, like mana reflection. So the more and more of these effects that you can stack, the more ridiculous things can get, and you can just have an insane amount of mana in your mana pool. Which, of course, leads us to yet another card in the price of your picks with Seedborn Muse. Untap all permanents you control during each of the player's untapped step. Yeah, let's untap those lands on every single player's turn and just be able to hyper utilize again our mana and just store up that excess mana that we're not using thanks to Omnath. And uh, yeah, when it comes to a three color card that says, hey, uh, you want to use your mana for me? Zakama Probable Calamity, a nine cost creature that again, you can cast quite quickly with a commander like this. And when it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, untap all lands 
you control. So, yeah, just, uh, hey, you know those lands that you're utilizing to, you know, store up mana? Do it again! And also, I've got three abilities that all can be incredibly impactful throughout the game for you that you can utilize your mana for. Finale of Revelation. Now, when it comes to utilizing certain cards, again, you're going to want to have a balance of ones that actually, you know, utilize Omnath's ability to give you extra free mana, and other ones that are just inherently good with, you know, Omnath and being able to utilize that mana. Finale Revelation, X blue blue, draw X cards, if X is 10 or more, which you can easily get to. Shuffle your graveyard library, draw X cards, untap five lands. You've got no max man size the rest of the game. Exile Finale of Revelation, basically a massive draw spell that can also give you some mana back again by untapping those lands. Next up, Chromatic Ori. Yeah, you can spend mana Zord Man of any color. So yes, again, Omneth does turn your unspent mana into black mana. That doesn't matter now. With this in play, it's like, hey, uh, yeah, you can use it however you'd like. That mana is just whatever mana you want. So now, yeah, you basically have perfect mana fixing. This also can tap for five mana. And sure, you can also draw cards for each color among permanent you control. So again, if you are going heavily into that multicolor synergy, you can get a lot of value out of this. Speaking of which, we're one of thought, again, a three mana card, a three different color card. You know what I mean. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, draw a card again depending on what way you lean with this commander you could go more heavily into creatures non-creatures you can get a lot of value out of this court of calling if you're going heavily into creatures this is a card that does have three colored mana symbols in it x green 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 convoke as well search library for a creature card to convert mana cost extra less on the battlefield then shuffle your library plenty of fantastic choices for you to pick from again if you are going really heavily into you know multicolor, you might go get you know like a general ferris rock rick to get it into play and then to be able to utilize that effect and just build your army quickly and overall, um, yeah, I don't know how I didn't really see this one coming because obviously Omnath was only missing black and then the Phyrexian invasion happened. And um, yeah, uh, Phyrexian Omnath, I probably should have seen that coming, but I guess I definitely uh, did not expect, well, this uh, this level of Omnath. I did not expect, you know, a mana bank plus also, you know, card advantage plus also additional mana to give you plus uh, a Phyrexian mana symbol. And they're only basically a four mana commander with all of this value pretty absurd and yeah i can see a lot of players out there being incredibly excited about this one i mean many of the omnaths are incredibly popular already five mana commanders are popular and this is a very powerful commander you can do a lot of exciting things with so i see a lot of players out there being really excited uh, i mean also you know sad that omnath is now a phyrexian uh but also very excited that they've got another omnath to build around so there you go but yeah if you are interested in this commander make sure you check out that card list link in the description below and consider picking up some of those cards sooner rather than later because again with spoiler season it's not really spoiler season yeah but you know with uh, extended spoiler season, let's just call it that, uh, when new commanders come out, sometimes players get really excited about them and then start buying out some of the cards that work really well with them. So yeah, make sure you check out that link in the description below. And with that, today's episode is coming to a close. So yeah, now it's my turn to hear from you. So let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on it. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support.